the one that mm. I thought of, I don't think you're thinking of right now. Wait, what are you it? thinking of it? I've no, no, I'm not thinking of any. That's it. All I'll say is Mandarin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. Sweetie, do you want to do the intro? Yeah. Hi, guys. Today, we're going to be doing a podcast. Welcome style back to our video. podcast. Oh, welcome back to our this podcast. This is episode 342. <laughs> Wow. Oh, I better start doing I have that. no recollection of any of the previous episodes. You're oh, my 342nd guest. Oh, thank I've you actually for had a me. huge array of guests since before you knew. Love that for you. Today's not necessarily a podcast. It's just an hour long episode of talking because we have some stories to share. Hour long? I think it'll be an hour. Okay, well, don't like set the precedence. You mean precedence? you think it'll be longer or shorter? Well, it could be shorter, and then I'll feel bad. Then I'll feel guilty. Like we didn't Can we deliver. just put this on? Of course we can. What I want to do with this video is share some stories that we were actually speaking about together that made me laugh a lot. And that is the session. UK? I'm good. You just keep going. No. I'm wearing a couple of hats right now. No. I am also wearing a couple of hats too. Yeah, I know. You're a presenter, you're an artist, and you're beautiful. What a hat. Thank you. My little sister came in to interview Rocket because she had to interview someone in like photography or fashion or something like that for her school. Anywho, we were laughing so much. And I was like, maybe we should share these stories because it's kind of funny. And I feel like I don't hear a lot of cringe stories from people that I like the work of. So I think it would be funny. I feel like it's a bit of a theme because I did that reject video. Now I'm doing this. Yep. But there is a risk of us seeing like absolute idiots. But just know all of these stories are a compilation of 12 years. We're not doing this day to day. And also, they're probably all my cringe phase. Yeah, Rocket has a lot. Mine are just like sad. <laughs> so when I'm worried because yours are going to be like, yes, that's so funny. And then it goes to mine and it's like, <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> Maybe because Rocket interprets things more in humor. And also Rocket has a lot more different clients. Like he will go out and work with a client and then in the next day work with another client or something. Yeah. So there's a lot of chances to have cringe I'm just in my studio like there's way less chances to be cringe. Yeah, I'm on site So there's a lot more that can kind of just go wrong. Yeah I don't know what order this will be in and I think we should try and have like a lesson that we learned from it Or something that we can take away from it that's positive because it's good practice to like look back on things like that Yeah, that when they go wrong and I feel like it's a good example to set Definitely. And I think we did learn lessons from some of the stuff. I definitely did. Did you? 100% I don't know about the one with the, <laughs> the French film festival one <laughs> I mean, one of the lessons I've learned from previous things going wrong is why I keep looking at the audio and why I keep like listening. I've got an earpiece Yeah, but right that's, now I think that's trauma. sometimes audio doesn't work out and audio is invisible, so it's awful. Last time we filmed a video, the reject video, I actually had to film it two times because it was focused on the background. Oh, that's, that's like, that's just a bad fail. Audio, I feel like, is acceptable because it's invisible. As a visual It's acceptable. What like, about practice, if you're an audio person? Video and, well, not if you're an audio person. Okay. I'm not an audio person. But like, out of focus, it's because we did a reframe and these aren't par focal. Yeah, so they're yeah. like, mm. oh. I'm editing this anyway. What do you got to stress about? You know about? what I'm doing when you edit? I'm going to star beast. Wow. Anyway. Anyway, this is going to be like an hour. So go, go get some snacks and a drink or yep. start sketchbooking. You don't have to look at us if you don't want to. Yep. Actually, you do have to look at us for one hour. Stare at us. <laughs> I mean, that's why we set this camera up or else it'll just be like... No, I, I like to watch podcasts when I work and I like to have them there so I can go... True, actually I do too. Yeah. Okay, anywho. Yes. Well, I, this isn't in like a specific order, so I'm worried it's not gonna be flowing. We're just gonna like do it. Yeah. I'm so excited for Rocket Stories because they make me laugh. Okay. <laughs> I will get you to tell two stories that I have because I think they group together nicely. Okay. Rocket has bad memory. Yeah, I've got- I've, <laughs> You're like, what am I talking about? <laughs> where, where am I? Um, <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I've got really, really bad memory and it's just like always been a thing. And I'm really, I'm really not good with remembering names. clients' names. Yeah. So I was on this shoot and I went up to the client. I was like, yeah, hey, sweet, I'm Rocket, I'm shooting. Like, nice lovely to meet, to meet you. you. Like, great, let's run through the event. And she's like, yeah, I know. We've, like, we've worked together like three times this week. <laughs> and there's no way to come back from that. No, that's there's like, nothing. you can't be like, oh yeah, you I just, know. You just gotta like. Yeah, I know that, joke. Exactly what I did, I was just like, oh, sorry. Did you? <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, please forgive me. I don't no, deserve this. Whoops. Wait, but baby, did you say like, just kidding? No, 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 no I didn't say that. No. Oh. I was like, yeah, I just, oh, well. <laughs> like, what are we doing today? Not everyone can have memorable names like you and your family. Yeah. And me. Yeah. And my family. But if everyone did, then it wouldn't be memorable. Actually, mine's not memorable, but yours is super memorable. Imagine if you knew like 15 rockets. You'd be like, ah. Oh, no, I think this should be cool. Oh, also that one was like, not that long ago. That was literally in the last two years. Yeah, like 
in the last like six months. On Rocket's to-do list is to be better with like remembering clients and studying like the yeah, course sheet and stuff. That's been on my to-do list since I was since I was born. This big. Anyway, um, so the next one is like when you first started shooting. Yeah, this one was like I was right at the beginning of my career. And yeah, you were shooting musicians, which now you do still. Yeah, I was like, it's getting around. Into, it was like actually the first uh, kind of the first client that I ever worked with, and the first like like recurring space, job. the like event space that I was like working with. So between those two, I kept running into this one guy. Yeah, and he was, I was also like, a photographer. Yeah, he's a photographer, so we'd always be close. Yeah, like proximity. I'd be like, hey man, like how you been? He like, looks so familiar. I know you. I 100% know you. Yeah, but I don't know like, your name. Cool. How you been, man? And he'd like kind of return the same sort of energy, being like, yeah. "What's up? Yeah." Could you tell that? Like, hey. was there any like weirdness or not? Maybe, maybe a slight, but maybe it was also just me, like. Early also, you don't nerves. know when people are awkward or not. You don't know what this person's like in their everyday life. You don't know, like. Yeah, true. Are they true. being awkward for them, or they're true. just like being awkward in general? Yeah, uh, but he's like very confident and straight. Like, you know. He's very straight. <laughs> Sorry, like very <laughs> straightforward. Lola. Yeah, yeah, like he's. Super just extroverted. Outspoken. Yeah, yeah, like very comfortable socially so there was no like there was no barrier there at all it was like yeah. cool on another event seven events down the track he's like i want to hire you bro and i was like oh cool like what, what do you do yeah and he runs this like photography kind of event party agency company online sort of publication, media publication blah, blah, thing blah, blah. like very big like in the very sydney big. days like 10 years ago very big. i feel and like, like still big now, I just feel like yeah. it was very different. Like the very it was different. like the big was, one, yeah. The, the stuff it didn't click for ages because I was like, wait, this guy hosts a show about like skating and surfing and stuff that I used to watch as a kid. <laughs> That's why I know this guy. Ended up being really good. Yeah. I ended up working for them for like four years or something. Yeah, three four years and doing a bunch of really great events, music festivals. Like yeah, it got my like event portfolio just like it just launched it. Honestly, and I, like, and I paid off like all my camera stuff and like yeah just made money for the first time but properly. When he when he hired me, I was like, don't you want to see my work, dude? Like, yeah. What the heck? And he's like, I've seen you. I've seen I've you seen shooting. Around, yeah. I've seen you at different events. I can tell your work's fine. You're yeah. good. I like your energy. I was yeah, like, and I feel like that's cool, a man. big thing. I feel like people do, I feel like vibe is like half of the, what you get hired based yep, on. 100%. So like go with an enthusiastic attitude, kind, friendly, like cooperative, and you will get the job. That's what I yep. think. Don't be rude. No, nah, don't be a rude boy or a girl or yep. a person. That's all. I think we discovered it. I think we were watching TV and it like came and you're like, oh. I was like, wait, that's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I've never been this man before in my life. <laughs> you're like, you're somehow like from. the top of something. You're like, oh my God, how did this happen? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you one of mine. I feel like mine is, a, mine is about like, this is pre knowing that you can like embellish what you do or like kind of skew what you do for the, whoever's asking you, if that makes sense. Oh. So I got invited to this. I would sometimes go to fashion events early on when I was like 22 or something. One of them was um, I went to a, like a Marimekko event. It was like a lunch to launch the new collection or whatever, which was really nice. And I was seated next to like, obviously I, I didn't have a plus one. Like it was just like a kind of intimate event where it was like a sit down lunch. Um, and then so I was seated next to people. We all sat down at where, where we were assigned because they have like the name plates and stuff. And like, obviously, like when you sit down, you like ask people like, oh, hey, like, who are you? What do you do? Blah, blah, blah. And I was asked that. And I, at the time I was working in like in design, like this is when I first left university, I was probably 21. And I was like, oh, I'm a designer. And they're like, oh, are you, do you like, are you a fashion designer? Like what, what, what do you do? Like what kind of stuff do you make? And I was like, I'm a website designer. <laughs> and everyone just went quiet and they're just like, Oh, it's the worst when everyone just goes quiet. Well, that's how I felt. I, it, oh, may yeah. not, it may not have been like that, but I was just like, oh, and then like, I was just like, hmm. there was like no, there was nothing to follow up because people like, first of all, probably don't care. It's nothing to, nothing that they can benefit them. The other thing is just like, they don't know anything about it. So they don't know what to ask. Yeah. But I was also freelan freelancing as an illustrator. So I could have totally been like, oh, I'm an artist or something. And that would have been yeah. more interesting. Yeah. But I didn't realize that I couldn't say exactly what, like what my day job was, I like, kind of. But it's like, th this is not why I'm invited. I'm not invited because I'm a website designer. I'm invited because like I'm an influencer slash like artist. That was really embarrassing for me because like it was, it was like pal palatable. Is that, was the word palpable? It was like, you could cut, like I just really felt that it was the wrong choice straight after I said it. And I was like, huh, okay, noted, noted. I feel like you do have to be like, you have to think about like what the person like what so, what's something that they can like grasp onto as a part of like what you're saying and i yeah. feel like and i still feel like i struggle with this today like when someone asks me about what i do like i still need to figure out what i say because i just 
will either be too vague or too in I, I feel there's so much risk of being too in depth. Like TMI, like no one cares. So when people say, I'm like, oh, I'm an illustrator. And like, I don't say anything else. And they say, what do you do? I'm like, like what kind of stuff do you do? I'm like, oh, it's really colorful. Yeah, but you're like, I, I would definitely vouch for you being so bad. I know. At like going into any detail about what you because do. Because I just feel like, I just feel like it's boring or it's infringing on the conversation or it's like bragging in some way because I, I do think that like sometimes I'm like, they like, can I see your work? And I show them on Instagram and they're like, oh my God. And I feel like if I'm like, I'm yeah. an illustrator, then I'm like, there's a fine line, obviously. Bow down. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I, know, I feel I know. like it comes yeah. across as. So then I just like completely don't talk about it at all. Yeah. Anyway, now I feel stressed like thinking about having that interaction. Because I saw some like school friends <laughs> like two nights ago and I was also like that. I was just like, oh, they're like, what have you been up to? And obviously in the last 10 years, I've been up to something. Did, did other people have to jump in on your behalf? I do all the time. People did, but it was more like... It was a costume party and you had to you had to dress as like A, something that started with A, L or B. I, I dressed up as an apple, so I had a beret that was like an apple. And um, people were like, oh, she's an artist. They're like, oh, cool. Because I had a red beret on. And they're like, no, she's an artist in real life. And I, then I really I could have been like an artist for, for the party. And I have all the paintbrush and I didn't have to buy anything. But anywho, that's way off topic. I guess the lesson is like... Don't be afraid to like gas yourself up a bit. It's not bad. And it also gives people the opportunity to like ask things about you and be interested in you. And you do have something to offer. So it's not, I don't think it's bad to show people that. Although I do need to like practice what I preach because like maybe I should figure it out. If Comment below what I should say when people say, what do you do? Because I really don't know. I don't know what to do. These are like mild. There are more bad ones. And that, we're going to save the one at the French Film Festival to the end because I just feel like it's a bit yucky. <laughs> Okay, this one is purely folly of youth for you, I think. Oh, what is it? It is the Air Force job. I have to go to the toilet. Oh, me too. We're back. So this story is the Air Force job. Is this a Just story? tell it to me like I'm your this friend. This is so cringe. So, if how, I already know that you know it. So how like, old were you? Yeah, but tell me. Tell me. I was, what was I, 22? 20, no. Yeah, this was like one of your first serious jobs. I yeah. feel like the most like serious yeah, one. Yeah, I got very excited when I got this call. First, and how'd okay, you get the job? So like, first off, massive client, massive agency. Um, and then biggest budget I've ever had. Yeah. Probably like two, three times more than I've ever done. Yeah. So I was like, yes, this is sick. This is And your friend referred going. you. Friend referred me. extra pressure all, to do well. Yes. Who was the client? It was Australian Air Force. So very exciting. Shooting, portraits as well. Yeah, doing portraits in of, front of pilots the planes. in front of like super Hornet planes. Like we're talking like Top Gun style stuff here That's cool. i was like this is eddie so shot, exciting eddie shot tom cruise the other day on the red carpet i did but yeah anyway um <laughs> wait was that for top Gun? no that was for mission, mission impossible. impossible i'm pretty were young. you nervous yeah very nervous really because, well like i was like and you don't okay, recognize I need not to, get nervous that well, much because i was like big pressure and then also like i need to light this well and i had it you actually had it work with a lot of lighting or anything like that yeah i had oh yes i was just like i can do this because it's fine like i also luckily i did work with the person that referred me Andy Green out there. Shout the out Andy. Shout out Andy Green. You're lovely. So I was assisting him on the previous one, which was Army. I was like, yeah, it was pretty chill. Like the way that he shot it, it was all just speed lights, like small flash stuff. I was like, yep, cool. I've got all that stuff myself. I can do it. I can manage it. No worries. Easy. And I shot the hell out of it. Like instead of being like focusing on quality, I kind of veered too much into quantity. Yeah. And I was like, cool. I'm going to make sure that I get like all the options. I've got like quite a quite an open schedule. I can shoot a lot. Mm -hmm. It was great. No worries. The context is for people, because they may not know how a photographer works, but you send like yep. a contact sheet and get selects done. Yep. Yep. You, when you send the contact sheet, you're selecting your own selects. And then from that, the client is selecting a further cull down selection that you'll yep. then like edit for the final thing. Yeah, like they don't need to see the photos of people blinking and the ones that are like, it's yeah. just not right. Like you'll set up a formation and get like 30 photos of that. Send like, I don't Eight? know, four, like whatever. Oh. Like just a small selection. I sent that and they're like, yeah, great, cool. Thank you. Now, can you please send us all the photos? Me being really young and naive. You just listened. I just listened. And I just sent everything I photographed. And it took <laughs> so long. Like I made a low-res export. Wait, how many was there? It was like over 8,000 photos. <laughs> which is so cringe. That's funny. No client ever wants to received over 8,000 photos. And like, like some of the photos would be so similar as well. Like that's just a nightmare Imagine to go working through. in an agency, you've asked for photos from the photographer just so you can have yep. all the options and see what there was in. You get 8,000 photos. Most probably they weren't that happy with the selects 
and they were hoping that they could find more and I hadn't selected well. That was probably their train of thought. And then they were inundated with photos. And they're like, where do you begin? Honestly, maybe they would have liked it. They did have buyout rights on it. Mm. So at least then they've got Everything. over 8,000 options. Where are those photos today? <laughs> Probably no. Yeah, I haven't seen many of them get used, so I don't think I did very well on that, which right. I accept because I was, what, 22? Mm. And you've never done a shoot like that before. Do you know what, what was your lesson you took away from it? Yeah, so lesson is when people ask for that, like, don't send them just everything. I feel like also be discerning with client feedback. Like, yes. they might be asking for something, that, but they don't really mean that. They just mean maybe they just want some more options. They just, yeah, they just want more. They don't want to deal with 8,000 photos. Raw photos. Yeah, and whatever. And how long did it take to upload? Gigs. It took so long. I think I, I think I went to the city and like found some Wi-Fi that was fast. I can't remember what I did. <laughs> but I think I was like, I, have to, I can't upload this from home. Australian Wi-Fi is notoriously Awful. bad. Like even today, sometimes um, videos take me like, three hours to upload and they're not very big. So yeah, that was really cringe. And I like, that's, that's one of the ones that I still go back to and I'm like, damn, that mm. sucks. That's life, mm -hmm. that's how you learn. I'll talk about my, my book festival trauma. Oh, this is so funny. Because, okay, the first one, this basically like put me in a really bad tra trajectory or like I allowed what happened to ruin a lot of other experiences for me and like also like deteriorate my mental health, not in like a very serious way, but just like, Cause a lot of anxiety, I guess is what I'm saying. What? Well, that's not fun. But it's true. This is just after publishing Zoom. What happens when you do that is your, if you're working with like a major publisher, they will book events for you. Yeah. So they will put you into book festivals, which is like part of the reason I choose to do it, like rather than self-publish is because I don't want to do deal with like PR and marketing and like things that I don't know about. They already have contacts. They already like know the festivals and know which ones they want to put you forward for and stuff like that. So I got put into this, uh, book festival and I was in the the realm of saying yes to everything at this point even though I was a little bit uncomfortable and I didn't love public speaking either so and I felt anxiety already so I was like put into this position where I was now creating a um, presentation for year two I think it was year two kids which is what like n eight nine Something like that, right? Yeah. So I went in in the way that I would go in for like a design conference and I was like let me explain the bookmaking process to you. I didn't talk about like contract stuff and things like that. I basically wanted to be like, I wanted to be an illustrator when I was little and I got to be an illustrator. Like I, I got to, when I was your age, I wanted to draw for a living and I actually get to do that. And that's an actual job because I think that's like something that really, every time like I learned that I could do something that I love, that was like a big step forward in actually going for it. So that was the intention, but the, the execution was going into depth about like storyboards and I don't know, like roughs and like final artwork and how to put, what, how the process of putting together book cover would be, right? And like for you two, that's like too old. But on the day, on the first day, it was two days of pres the same presentation. There's like a big auditorium of kids. From the first day, I, they found out or they let me know that actually it wasn't going to be year two, year two kids. It was going to be pre-K kids. <laughs> So like, and, and that doesn't seem like that difference, only three years, but like when it comes to the kind of presentation you're giving, my presentation was already too boring and too old for year two kids. It was colorful, it was pretty, but it was just on, it was like not interesting. This is like, they don't have high, like high attention spans. You need to be super interactive. You need to be super like controlled in how you interact with them. Because like, if you don't tell them exactly what to do, you will, they will, they will be very literal with what you say. Wait, say the example of the... So for example, them. I'd be like, does anyone, like I asked a question like, I don't know what the question was, but it was like, put your hand up if blah, blah, blah. And then I put their hand up and then I went on with the presentation. And then this teacher ran up to me like, probably 20 <laughs> seconds later, like, you have to tell them to put their hands down. <laughs> because they were still like... <laughs> that's so I was sweet. Like, that's something I know because I'm not like a librarian or a teacher. Like the Thank best you. book um, presentations I've seen are from people who are teachers and librarians. Like their way of like working with kids is like so inspiring and awesome. But anyway, so that happened, which was fine because that wasn't so traumatizing. I was like, okay, noted, like I have to like be careful with what I ask of them and be sure to like be attentive and watch everyone to make sure like people aren't just still have their hands up after like 20 seconds. Can you imagine holding a hand up for 20 seconds? But, like, yeah. And I'm just go on like with the story and, I'm, and they're still like this. And it wouldn't go on for like another oh, 20 more. And then the next thing, another thing that happened is, 
Oh yeah, like the kind of questions that you ask. Like I was so not prepared for this. Like I should have done more research or something. I think I did like look into book things and I got like the gist. Oh, like you tell a bit of your life story. You tell a bit of like your inspiration. You read the book, la la la, process, la la, la right? But I really wanted to like, show kids the process of making a book because it like, may not be something to think about, but like, that's too old, like in the way that I said it was too old. But anyway, so there was um, another time where I was like, does anyone know what, like I'd be like, well, does anyone know what an illustrator is? And they'd be like, that's someone who draws. I'm like, great. I'm like, do you guys have a dream for when you're older? And they put their hand up, I'm like, yes. And they'd be like, I want to be a pizza delivery man. I was like, amazing. And then I'd be like, this person would be like, I want to be a dinosaur. I was like, sick. And then, I, and then but the, like a lot of the time, I will ask them like, what do you have a dream for what you want to be when you're older? And they'll, they'll put their hand up like so excited to interact. I'll be like, yes. And then they'll be like, I just like look away and they'll be like, okay. <laughs> so like you really have to be so careful. Like there's just so much that can go wrong or like trip up the rhythm of it. But that's not even the cringe part. That's just things that I've learned. The cringe part was I, I was like probably storyboard deep into the process of making a picture book. And this is the very, very first presentation I did with kids. And this kid goes, like, I was like going, doing, I was so nervous by the way as well. And this kid's like, this is too long. And I was like, oh my God, this, this feels bad. It's feels so bad. And I didn't know that I was anxious at the time. Like, I didn't know this was like, like I was really like, kind of like redoing my presentation up until the point of the presentation. So it was very stressful. And then this happened, I was like, oh my God. So it's like being like trying your hardest and then someone being like wrong, that's like really bad. So I was like traumatized because the last thing I want is these kids sitting in this auditorium for 45 minutes and being bored, right? Yeah. So then that night I go back to the hotel room and I like completely restructure my thing and I try and keep it more focused on the story, but I still keep in like the storyboard elements. Um, if I was gonna go back do, and do that now, it would be like the, the ones that I've done since then have just been like very heavily focused on like activities. So like passing out paper, pens and like teaching kids how to draw on the style like they would draw. That's they great. love that. Yeah. And like after, like they, they're like so pumped to do that. I'll give them like a little bit of process just to show like how, how the layers of the process turn into a final picture book. But I'm not going in a, a storyboard is this. Here's what my storyboards look like. And then they gave me feedback and then I changed it to this. It's just like too much information. So it's like a really, really steep learning curve of like there is like appropriate presentation for each age group and like demographic. And I did not hit it. And I feel like I still don't really, I'm not good at it. But what I can do is rile the children up. Like I went to the Middle East for like, I actually filmed that in a video. Yeah, you did. So there's a vlog about like me going and doing this. But I, um, went, I got invited to this like, book festival in the Middle East, which was really amazing. Like, I'm so glad I went. It was, was an really amazing cool. experience. And I met like friends there that I'm still friends with today. Like we share that experience. It was such a great thing that I did that. And I was so nervous. You'll see like Rocket trying to get me to go into the Uber. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to. Cause it was after that first time. Anywho, I was like so stressed and I was like redoing my presentation in the hotel room as per usual. I was also yeah. working on the storyboards for Bandit. So I was still doing that while I was like That's at the right. event. Anyway. I went to this like school of children and like one thing I can do is like rile kids up but one thing I can't do is like bring them back down so like I really heavily rely on teachers to like guys come on la 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 because I'll be like la and they'll be like la 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 and I'm really sorry like I don't have those skills yet I'll try and learn them but I just love rallying the kids up because <laughs> I'm like guys when you know what I when you figure because like, what I like to teach them is like drawing like is just a bunch of different shapes and lines that makes up a bigger picture because then it I feel it makes it a lot easier to anyway whatever so I'm really rambling but anywho I'd rile these kids mm -hmm. up and the teachers would have to like they they like, like, come on like blah blah and, they, and then also they couldn't understand what I was saying because it was like I I had a translator oh yeah and like it had to be super basic for kids but super basic as well because it was like mixed language and stuff I had learnt to be super aware of like how the crowd is doing because at that point I was like okay we're just gonna skip this and we're gonna go straight to like the drawing exercise and blah 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 so I think it's like go with the flow but I'm very not a go with the flow gal but then do you just like leave you're like cool energy excitement yeah crazy it's like kids. yeah yeah Bye. yeah and i'm like and then they say say thank you to them. and then i went to the principal and they gave me a certificate I took photos and then with all the me. teachers are like oh my god i gotta sort these kids out the funny thing is like there's oh, the amount of pressure i put on myself at that time without yeah. knowing that it was inappropriate amount of pressure like yeah. caused myself so much stress all i had to do was go into that classroom for one hour and it was just drawing and then the other thing i had to do was sit on a panel and talk and that take took no preparation because it was asking questions yeah. um that trip would have been so different had I not like riled myself up into that situation. The cringe part was meant to be the story about like, this is too long, but the <laughs> lesson is kind of like, it kind of takes those really horrible 
traumatizing moments to like get you to be better at what you do. Yeah. I think because I feel like I, I could be better now. I don't really do events because I'm a bit scared and it like it takes like days of anxiety. But I think like if I keep it simple and just go in confidently and focus on activities and things the kids love, like that's all they really want. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry for the long winded question. No, it's good. Oh, another book festival thing from that same first book festival was I was checking out of the hotel. This is like not nothing to do with my actual performance as a creative, but I was checking out of the hotel and I like took my vitamins. I was trying to like be my best self. I packed my bag and then I went to check out. And you know how you're supposed to eat vitamins on like not an empty stomach? I was like, oh, I'm going to the breakfast. So like, it'll be fine. But it, like to check out took a bit longer. I had to like take stuff out of my bag. I got there and I was like feeling really sick and I was like, and all the authors are like sitting in the restaurant, like all the authors that had, because everyone was housed in the same place. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I think I'm going to throw up. And I was like, put the toast, I'm like, please come out. And it's like slowly going through that like conveyor belt, do you know what I mean? I should have just ate the bread. Yeah. And I was like, and then just as it popped out, I like had to run and I like spewed all in the toilet. Wow. I, I feel like people knew because like I was there and I ran, like yeah. I just stopped and I like ran for the toilet. Oh, you can tell. You can tell when someone's like, that's an emergency toilet run. Anywho, sorry about that. <laughs> I don't remember that story. Which one? The spewing. I told you that the other day, I thought. Anyway, this is like a bit gross, but it does have to do with, I think this can kick off your like film festival stories. Oh yeah. So this, this one's going to kick it off. We're doing French. French film festival, that's right. Okay, cool. So... Rocket got really good at shooting film festivals for some reason. Yeah, I got really good at it. And I do, do people organize the same festivals or something? Like how did you get also this job? Because he did Sydney Film Festival for many years. Yeah, I did Sydney Film Festival, then I did French Film Festival. Uh, Japanese Film Festival hit me up, but that didn't oh, end up that'd going be through. awesome. Yeah, that would have been really, really fun for some reason. Film Festival guy. And <laughs> me? I'm the Film Festival guy. <laughs> yeah, so I, was, I, got, I got really sick. Like really like food poisoning sick. And it was only like the day before the event that this happened. Mm. So it was too last minute to cancel. Too last minute to get someone else. I was kind of like else. feeling like I could maybe heal up. Like I've had food poisoning before and it's only lasted like 12 hours. So I was like, yeah. oh, fingers crossed. Yeah, and then you were like, maybe there's something I can get from the chemist, like yeah. help me out. It'll be fine. Like, let's, let's just sit it out. We're good. I've got like a second shooter. So like at worst, like I just they have to cover. kind of have him cover. Yeah. And I went to the chemist and I got this stuff called Imodium, I think it is. I think it's a modium. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is, is that a... I oh, I don't know. I don't I'm not sure it's if it's It's basically a like a medication yeah. that you take. It's like a pill, is it? Yeah, it's a pill and that you take. You, it like stops you from pooing yourself. Yep. But you still feel like you're going to shit yourself for the whole time. So Real like bad. you literally feel like you're going to shit yourself, but you can't. Yeah. And like, you know... Work this, on the red this, carpet. This will be like TMI, but whatever. Like I was full-blown diarrhea. Like prior to taking this pill, that's why I was like, well, I need, I need something. Because otherwise he's going to be running off the red carpet and potentially yeah. pooing all over the red carpet. Well, like I'm going to be, I'm going to just give you missing MIA because I'm going to be running to the toilet constantly. And I was like, okay, so like, so I took this pill. Oh, like he never used it before. He didn't know that this would happen. No idea. Don't know what it feels like. I'm putting all my trust into this pill. I think the chemist did say, this isn't, you should try not to take this if you don't need to. Yeah, they're like, it's not great. Like, it's not a fun experience. And I was like, well, okay, I have to. so is like shitting your pants on a red carpet. That's yeah. not fun for sure. I mean, I can't say from experience. <laughs> but so I'm like sitting there shooting these like, you know, kind of like B-grade celebs and like producers and filmmakers and all these things. And like the CEO of like the film festival. And I am full blown needing to shit myself. Like <laughs> I am like Are you sweating putting anything? a smile. Yeah, I'm like, I'm pushing back the sweats because I'm like... <laughs> This is the most uncomfortable I've ever you're, been. You're putting your faith in a pill. Yeah, that's all like, I'm doing. I you feel, feel like, like it's going to come out. I am going to shit myself. Like I feel so 100% sure that something is going to go wrong and I'm stressing with a smile on my face. Mm. And it was the most uncomfortable thing ever. Yeah. And it was just so like it was so hours. cringe. Yeah, it was hours. So I'm sitting there doing these red carpets being like, hey guys, all right, sweet. Can I just get you guys just a little to the right? <laughs> cool, no worries. And then I'm like, You're like, you're like, ah! <laughs> like, I feel like... Every now and then, Harry, the like second shooter, he'd, he'd be coming up to me and be like, how are you holding, how are you holding yeah, together? Yeah, because he knew and the I'm whole like, time. And I was like, I was at home being like, oh, I hate Rocket League. It was so funny. I couldn't help but like laugh at how tragic this whole scenario was. Yeah. <laughs> And at the end, I was like, I am, I have got to run. And I ran straight to the toilet, couldn't go to the toilet. 
It was so <laughs> brusque. I spent like 10 minutes on the toilet and I'm like, man, this pill is so Strong. like good at doing its job, but man, it's frustrating. It was so I feel bad. Like, I feel like maybe the lesson is that like, no matter what you have got going inside and what you feel like, people don't know. <laughs> like, oh. I don't think people are like, that guy needs to poo the whole time. Like, people, you're just like being super professional, being like, hey guys, all I'm being stupid, but inside you're like dying. I feel like that's how I feel sometimes with the anxiety levels of like giving a talk and it's just like no one actually knows if you just like fake it like it's fine sometimes like the way you present yourself is more important than like managing your emotions although I have to say I have to go to therapy now so maybe that's not a good advice <laughs> I was a good beginner when I started and I would reach out to people and everyone should do that and I should do that now um, that I wanted to work with. And instead of like sending a portfolio or like a website or even just a PDF, I sent literally like 10 or 15 Tumblr links to like different Tumblr accounts. And it wasn't even like custom links. It was just like Tumblr, fairylittlepeach.tumblr.com slash 5 billion or whatever, like, you know what I mean? So bad. And it's just like no explanation, just like sent them there. That's so unprofessional. Like to, to for there to be like a barrier, like not, it's, first of all, unprofessional, it looks really bad. But also like some people don't want to open links and emails because it's scam. Another thing is that it's like a multiple web pages makes it hard for people to view your work. And you should advice that I got from like a creative director that at the first ad agency that I interned at was like never have a barrier to people seeing your work because it's like it always just allows them to click out. That's why that's why on my portfolio, my my work is my homepage. Get a website. Recommended. That's the lesson, which leads perfectly into my sponsor. Seamless. Who is it? Squarespace. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video as per usual. You guys know I love Squarespace. Rocket also uses Squarespace for his website. Here's my website, boom. Here's Rocket's website, boom. They're both gorgeous. Sorry, talking a bit fast. And also not to mention it's super easy to use. We love Squarespace over here. I don't know why I'm pretending to be a bad ad reader or something. Like it's not, it's not a vibe. I, like I actually genuinely love Squarespace and you guys know this. Yeah. You can see it because my website is with Squarespace. It's beautiful. I use Supply for anyone wondering. It's an older theme and I will never stop using it. Anyway, if you've never used Squarespace before, you can go to squarespace.com slash freelandpeach. You get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. And when you begin, you should fill in the questionnaire that's like, what would you use your website for? Because then they will, they will spit out like a bunch of themes that are relevant to like what you want. Yep. Yeah. Squarespace is the best. Thanks, Squarespace. Thank you. This is another film festival. Um, this one's not like less cringe but more just like, just sad. Like it was so intense. Mm. It's definitely the worst I've felt on a job mm. ever. Mm. Like it was just so, such a difficult scenario. Mm. So I feel like it's, maybe it's not cringe, but it's kind of still interesting in a weird like historic career moment for myself. <laughs> so the client sent me a run sheet and I had the wrong location. They changed location. I was sitting at one venue waiting, being like, what the hell? This is like a big premiere. Like, this is like... Like, were they, why is no one There's here? like a red carpet with lots of media is going to be involved. It's dead quiet. And we're talking like 15 minutes out. Yeah. What's happening? So I could, I call them. And like, I'd only just got there because like, I'm, I'm running around doing... He's I'm got all, all his day. gear as well. I like, I left seven events that day. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm getting there at the time. I'm yeah. not getting there an hour early mm. to prepare and stuff. So I'm like, sweet, I arrive. Where is everyone? And call them up. They're like, oh no, you're at the wrong spot. Like, it's it's over here <laughs> at this cinema. I feel like and that like, feeling would be like dr your stomach dropping. Worst. You're like, oh. But at least it's like still within kind of close distance. Yes. It's like, like we're it's probably all within like the city. I reckon it's like a 15, 20 minute walk away. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, I'm going to have to run. <laughs> I will sprint. And I got all my camera gear. So I'm like carrying, literally sprinting from one venue to the next through George Street. Like this is the main street, main in, street in the city. And I'm like running in the middle of the road in between the cars. Oh my God. Just like, heart. gotta go, sweating. Like, I'm gonna make it. It's all good. Also, like, meanwhile, fix this. red carpet attire is like trousers oh, and a yeah. dress shirt yeah. and like socks and nice shoes. Yes. So, like, you can't run in nice shoes. No, and also, your pants are like constricting. Awful. Okay, Awful so experience. you get there. Really and what, hot as well. Really what hot. What happened? Oh, I was in the summer. Yeah. And I get there. It's like packed. Yeah. Like all, the, fully, all the other photographers are set up. Rocket is the, Rocket the, is official. the official photographer. So yeah. he has the priority over all the other photographers. He's allowed to go in the front. Yeah. So I don't really need to be in the media pit, but that's really where I usually go because that is just like, that's the protocol. Yeah. And, and you don't want to get in other people's photos. Yeah. You kind of, if you're not in the media wall, you're standing in front of other photographers and it gets like, it, it gets a bit of a punish. Anyway, the client I was hoping would save a spot for me. That's kind of what happens. Like here's the official spot. Here's like these people. Here's like this people, all that stuff. 
There was no, there was no like none, none of that. that. Media pit was quite small and it was just full. Mm -hmm. No space for me. So I was like, cool guys, like, you know, everyone already knows that I'm the official. Mm -hmm. I made it clear as well. I was oh, like, the people Sweet. that are there, they're like, they're getting paid based on what photos they get. Yes, well, yeah, some, rocket... some, some, not everyone. Okay, a people lot are of... runners, some are stringers, and they're different. Things. Okay, so some people are getting, some people that are in this are like paparazzi vibes, not that they are paparazzi, yeah. but they get paid for the photos they sell. Yeah. So they don't get a good photo, they won't sell it, and they won't make money. Yeah. You're getting paid based on like, you're getting paid for the event, yeah. essentially. Yeah, so I get there and I'm like, okay, cool. Guys, just letting you know, there's no like space for me. So this is like I'm talking to the client, being yeah. like, no space for me. It's going to be a bit tricky. Like uh, I might just have to jump in and like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, sweet, no worries. You just you just go on the carpet. Yeah. That's that's your spot. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about the other people. And I'm like, sweet. I go up to all the other photographers. I'm like, hey guys, you know, really sorry. Like I'm shooting official, blah blah. blah. Yeah. So I'm going to have to position here. I'll go first and I'll direct it so that everyone else can get a great photo. Yeah. And we'll just work together. If and there's it'll one be clean. thing that Rocket is always maintain well it's not one thing but like i think the most admirable thing that you maintain is like worrying caring about other people and other people's understanding other people's experience and like trying to make the best for everyone yep. you're genuinely good and people who come people i've met like at events and stuff remember what the prime video event and oh, like yeah. that man was just yeah. saying how good you were that's so nice of him yeah like He's i great. feel like a lot of people have really good things to say about yeah. you because you go the extra mile and making sure that it's like fair yeah. understanding and, and a good experience for everyone anyway. yeah because like media pits and like red carpets can be savage yeah. like they can be a terrible place Why? so i'm always just because everyone like how you described everyone's like basically competing because yeah. they want to sell their photo so they yeah. need the best photo and they need to make sure that other people oh, kind of don't each... in a way okay. like it is a somewhat a competitive yeah. thing so people can take that really close to heart. And I can imagine if that, you know, if their mortgage like, is on the line for that, yeah, they but would. But also like, maybe they can't totally pay their mortgage it. that month or something, exactly. or like pay rent. Exactly, so it's like, I totally get it. Um, but yeah, so I'm there and I'm like, sweet, I wanna make sure that this is all structured and we're like, we're good with that. And yeah. I always try and do that and I always try and work with every other photographer on a carpet, because yeah. it can be a nightmare. And they were not happy, they just no. weren't. Like I had people, Pushing, pushing me, shoving me, like kicking me lightly and like Calling like the back names. and stuff like that because I was like oh in God, front, like they'd be bad. like nudging me and stuff, so like trying to ruin photo. my photo and just like annoyed and they were like calling names and they would just be like, get out of the way, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, and it's so unprofessional to like it was the like people being shot. Yeah. Like it was awful. And coming from me trying to be like, like I'm trying to help as well. There's like so many emotions. Well. It's like you, you, Crazy. you, I don't know if that stage you realized that they on the call sheet said the wrong thing. You probably thought that you were in the wrong place. Yeah, I'm trying like to figure it out. Like you read it wrong. Yeah. There's that, then you're rushing. So you're like adrenaline's yeah. there, like stress. Yeah. Then you've tried to manage it. You feel guilty because you know that you should have been there earlier yeah. so that it would avoid this. Yeah. Like, and, and, then, and then social rejection and like peer rejection and, and like bullying almost. And putting on a smile for the people in front of me. Yeah. And being like, hey guys, how are we going? Like, <laughs> so let's take a photo. Oh, right like, so it's like dramatic. thinking about it, like I get a bit shaky. Okay, okay. Cause it's like, it's, it was the worst feeling. I feel like it's your worst experience. The worst. Life. It was so, so just annoying. Also like faith in humanity vibes. It's like, yeah, I was like, guys, can't you like see that I'm like having a horrible time? <laughs> yeah. Aren't you guys realizing this is cruel? <laughs> yeah. What the hell is going on? Um, and then I feel like you cried. Oh, I'm waiting to jump to the end of the story. Oh, okay, right. pretend I didn't say it. <laughs> no. Then uh, I cried. <laughs> so then I was like, after that, I'm just like shaking yeah. and just like, I got through it. I missed a few photos because it was just too much. The client saw it and was like, I'm so, I'm sorry. so sorry. And everyone was just like, oh, and I feel really bad about this, but there's one photographer I forget who it was because I was just a mess. Yeah. But one guy came up to me afterwards and he was so kind and it really <laughs> helped. And he was like, dude, I understand that like where you were and what happened was shit. Like I understand everyone was pretty pissed off. Yeah. But like, I am it. so sorry yeah. that you had to go through that. And like, that was horrible, man. Yeah. And he was just so like consoling and comforting yeah. and I was like at the same time being like like yeah you were in the way sort of thing yeah but like, it's firm like but loving but I was way. like he was also like if I was in your shoes not I wouldn't have been able to do anything better like that sucked and I was just like tearing and just like shaking and just being like <laughs> I need to edit these photos now I, was I like, cry and oh. I am really good <laughs> it was so bad oh, like baby. it was horrible and I still work with a lot of those people today. <laughs>
Wait. Wait, are you joking? How could they do that? Like, I don't I get that as well. <laughs> I see them all the time. I pretend they didn't kick me and in a professional setting. It was all just like... They even shaved me hard. That is so unprofessional. Yuck. It was like, there was so many of them that I can't be like, oh, this one in particular oh, said this that. or like did this. It sounds like a nightmare. Doesn't it sound like an actual nightmare? Like, yeah. you wake up, you're like, oh, but it was like your real life. Yeah, I feel like it's that scene in The Simpsons where, like, everyone's like... You know, who oh, was it? And I don't like, know, but I know. Everything goes red and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like that. I was <laughs> like, oh. And also like, it was like, whatever. It's such a, like, we're not talking like Leonardo DiCaprio and like all these big names. We're yeah. talking like Australian B-grade celebs. Like, Honey. No, but like, they're not making huge sales is what okay, I mean. Okay. Like, you're not doing these huge global sales. Yeah. Where like, oh, okay, you know. Um, Jamie Foxx tripped over on the red carpet, sold globally. Yeah. No, these photos are selling like that, a, like a there small was crowd. not to be that the mother or whatever, but do you think they're jealous of you because you're the main photographer or something? Do you know what I mean? No, I don't think so because it's like like they always know that there's a main. But you have priority, like you always have... get the best shots then. Well, not not no, not always. Like there are people that are great photographers that do the media pit stuff but, really well. But and you, don't you get, like, get priority for the photos, so you have the opportunity to get the best shots. Let's not crinkle that while we're talking. Sorry. Yeah, I would have the priority being the official. Maybe they see you in many events and like, oh, and this one time you, it kind of gave them license because you were late. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Like, I, a lot of those people are waiting there for like 45 minutes. And you rock up like And then five I minutes rock up what? basically when the talent's rocking up and just stand in front of them. Like, that's how they, that's, that's their, their experience. experience. So it's like, I get it. You'd feel pretty annoyed. Yeah, but but not to the level of kicking and pushing. Like That's that's a soft. That, that stuff was insane. If we're in America, we could That stuff was insane. <laughs> Just kidding. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, I think that's the worst part. And also, I feel like you're sensitive to disappointment, disappointing people yeah. anyway. So it's like, yeah. this is like disappointing to the point of people yeah. pushing you. Yeah. Like, oh. Trying to like gain approval from your peers and just being like cool and just like kind of having to push back because like the media pits further back i'm now on the carpet so yeah. i'm quite close so i need to like press kind of quite into them and they're just like nudging me and stuff and it's just like yeah. oh, do you think part Christ. of it's like also like not understanding why they couldn't understand, be empathetic because sometimes when i get youtube comments that are not nice i i don't have a problem with what's being said what i have a problem and i cannot get over is like why someone would say it like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I get because that. I've never left a mean comment on someone's video, so I cannot understand like what it takes to dislike someone so much that you leave something like that. Definitely. There's definitely an aspect of that because I'm like, how are you not understanding how cruel this looks? Yeah. What, how do you justify your actions yeah. right now, dude? Like, what is going so through your mind? That, like, I almost cried hearing that story again. Oh, I was full on. It was crazy. And like, I did explain it to them. I was like, look, I've got, I've got a different location on my run sheet. Yeah. So like, I have sprinted here. Like, I am doing my best, guys. Yeah. Like, I was at the other location early. So, like, don't don't think that I'm not like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to roll up and be like, hey, cool, what's up? I'm just going to yeah. take this spot and get in front of everyone. No, I don't care. Yeah. No, I feel it. like, can I, I'm sorry if it's like I'm being such a stickler for the lessons, but I feel like also a lesson is like, sometimes you can do everything in your power and things will still go wrong. Yeah, because it's other people's experience. Yeah. Like, but also like them, it's just like a really bad cocktail of yeah. them not showing you the thing, everyone being stressed, you being yeah. like, like a, their perception of you arriving late and all this stuff. Yeah. So sometimes you can do everything in your power to make it go right, but it will not. And that's something I need to learn. So this is a good video for me, I guess. But I, it's hard to accept. I, I do remember I I like I didn't voice up because I don't like get angry at like no. my clients or anything. But I do remember being like that was not that was not well done. Like yeah. I'm I'm really I shaken. I don't like that. <laughs> no, just like a small little like. Guys, yeah, like don't no. do that again. Like, make I'm not, sure. I'm not going check. through that again. Yeah, and they were like so like apologetic, apologetic and appreciative and everything. The fact that I like sprinted over and yeah. like all these things, they were very like so sorry. Like, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, um, yeah. Very good. We have one more <laughs> film festival story, which is about like you meeting oh. James for the first time. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. Okay, so James Morgan. Oh, is... I reckon this is kind of about like personality, like pulling you through in a way. Yeah, this as is well. this is definitely similar to that other first story and confidence as well. Yeah, so I was shooting, again, official for this film festival, and on the carpet was Robert Pattinson. Um, <gasps> Twilight, he was shooting Twilight, just and kidding. And I, honestly, I don't recall the others. Yeah, because he's the star. But there was like a big film, and there was a, a few big names. Yeah. And we had like the whole street blocked off, and it was just me and this one other photographer, and we were just taking photos. We were the only people, us two, that were allowed to photograph these celebrities in this street, in this space. Cool. Um, everyone else had to be like, let's in the show Rocket's photos of Robert Pattinson. 
Oh, do I have those? La, 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 I'll find la, them. They'll, la, they'll be somewhere. It'll be like, we don't have the fur owners. <laughs> <laughs> Just empty, broken, like... You'll be able you know, to find them online if they're like official photos. Yeah, there'll be something. Okay, they're, anyway. they're on my Dropbox or something. somewhere. Just anyway. to prove it. That it's yeah. real. Yeah, so this other photographer, he was shooting for the publicist of like Robert Patton and stuff. So like official for the celebrities. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, cool. All right, who is this guy? James Morgan. But did you nice. know that he was shooting official for them? He said they're publicists. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, cool. And I was like, sweet, I'm shooting. He, he says that I said that I was shooting for Robert Patterson. I don't think I said that. That's how he relays that story. I don't think you, you would but I was like, have said that. I think I said, hey, I'm shooting like official. Robert. So like, I'm going to be on the carpet. So maybe You're also he gonna interpreted be here. that as Robert Patterson. Maybe. He's a lot older. He's, He's like, like probably 48, 48 at this point. Or something, 45, yeah, 48, 45, something yeah. like that. And I'm like, like 20. I'm 23, I think yeah. I was at that stage. And, and he looks young. So he looks like he, he's yeah. 31 this year and he doesn't look that. Do you know what I mean? So imagine I him at 23. Looks very young. Yes. And so then I'm Your like, audacity. yeah, sweet. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm shooting official. And he's like, yeah, so am I. Who is this kid? Whatever. Yeah. And he's kind of like, all right, cool. Got to deal with this kid. <laughs> and you're on like the racing around. <laughs> yeah, I'm like shooting all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, sweet. Oh, this is great. How exciting. You get to shoot like some big Celebrity. names and, and just. You know like, that I love Robert Pattinson. Yeah, it was, it was kind of funny. And then um, I'm sitting there basically just like directing. You're this. like, James, come over here. Yeah, this I'm like, James, like, what are you doing? Get, this, get the theater in the background. Like, <laughs> why are you backwards, man? Like, come on, like, come over here. And he's just like, who is this kid with all this like confidence and just like All these big ideas with no experience. Me. Like this guy, James Morgan. James has been Morgan, shooting since he was 17. He's been shooting and he was getting like news awards like when he was 17, shooting he's for big royal news corps. He used to shoot for Royal Family. He's from London and he's like big, big name in like commercial photography. Yeah. And he manages enormous jobs with like multiple like helicopter flights and blah, blah, blah. Qantas, all the stuff. big crews. Huge things. stuff. And then I'm just like, I don't know who this guy is. Cool. Let's, what is we doing? Whatever. And I'm just like treating him like nothing. Like, uh, not treating, <laughs> no, treating no, him like, him like, treating an him equal, like treating when him I like feel normal. like he was not an equal. He, he was, was like far beyond. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, sweet. Okay, cool. Come shoot over this like, side. Blah, blah, blah. I love that like, you were like, why so come over cringe. here? Like stand here. And it's take so a cringe. It's like, he knows what he's doing. I'm the okay, little young grommet with what? Four years, five years experience at that stage. And um, yeah, at the end, he's like, hey. Who are you? Do you want to get your card? What's, yeah, what's, what's your story, buddy? Like, I, can't, I like your vibe. And he's like, here's my card. Let's get coffee. Yeah. And then that struck up like me assisting, um, assisting and being like, he was like my mentor for like however long. Yeah, like probably and, two, three years. Yeah, and did massive projects with him, learned a heap of stuff. Yeah, stuff about business, stuff yeah. you can't like learn online. Really good stuff. He's like the way he structures his business as a extremely successful like photography service, yeah. just like from the inside out, like yeah. it was really interesting. Um, just like all the details and advice about like taxes and financial directions yeah. and things that are like very, very hard vital. to just know. Yeah, yeah you very don't hard just... to just learn. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was but, really cool. Yeah, no regrets kinda, there. Kind of really cringe. Like, it's cr yeah, that it's one is funny. cringe. It was also because you still work <laughs> with him today. So, like, thinking back to that is, like, so funny. Yeah. Another one that I'd like to talk about first meeting cringe. This isn't that bad. This is just, like, oh, I just wish it didn't. I just couldn't. I think my problems, my one's not that bad, but I can't get over the cringe. You can get over the cringe with funny stories, making them into funny stories, but I cannot bear the cringe. What do you like, mean? The one with, like, the when I first got a job at Cypher. And even when you're having the cringe, you know it's going to be funny. Yeah. No, so I don't know. Like, this was really bad. This is hilarious. So, uh, this was not really bad. This was just like, oh God, like it's so unnecessary, not even yeah. funny cringe. This was like when I had just finished my internship at like a big ad agency and I was, and I had been referred um, to this other person to get coffee so that I could get an internship at this like smaller design studio. I was just like nervous, but I wanted to like make a good impression. I don't know why I thought this would make a good impression, but like as soon as like I like, um, got to the office, I like, dinged the doorbell and then the person who was like the creative director of the company came out and I just like hugged them. That's like not good, sweetheart. That's like inappropriate, like puts them in an awkward position, right? Weird, right? Yeah. Anyway, like I, oh, the other one is like going, that's not, ugh, I guess that's not cringe. It's like, not going the, the right move, but like, Anyway, the, the point is, do not like hug coworkers when you first meet them. If you like, you, they don't know you. They don't know your intentions. They don't know anything. It's like, d don't be afraid to give a good, solid, firm handshake. 
Yeah, but I would never forget it. Like, I just feel so bad. And, like, I love Alex. Like, he was, like, a great creative mentor for me. And I feel like it goes off of the love story because in terms of, like, it was the first meeting of someone that really, like, helped you with, like, business. Yep. I feel like what, getting experience it's for something that you may not really want experience for, like, which is, like, business, taxes, all this crap. And also, like, for me, it was, like, pitching to clients and stuff like that. That's the experience that I got yep. at working in, like, more of, like, a formal job structure. And I feel like that's the most valuable experience I had more than like university and yep. stuff like that. I feel like I learned so much in that job and like it might not be glamorous. I, I know so many people message me about like, how do I just become freelance? Do what you do. And it's like, I would not do that. I would first get a job, save up and also learn from people in the industry and like meet as many people as you can in the industry because that's like the best place to do it. Yep. So like, I don't know what, the, I don't know where I was going with that, but just like cringe story, but also like lesson was. Sometimes you're going to get the best um, experiences for things that you wouldn't even think to research yourself. Yeah. All right. There's one act. There's there's one more theater slash movie story. Oh, this one. This good. one is gold. I know, I know what this one is. <laughs> this one's so good. This okay. One, this one is hilarious. Okay, so there was this movie. It was what? a premiere, big premiere, for this movie, The Bejeweled, I believe it was. What's that? And it's a period piece. We're talking like Downton Abbey style. Is it Australian? Pipe. Uh, possibly. It's got Nicole Kidman. I think she was there. I think we photographed her. I don't recall. There was many of those p premieres. Um, it was huge. Like, we're talking, this is the State Theatre, and uh, I, I would guess maybe 2,500 people can seat in the State Theatre. Something yeah, and like it's that. also the most beautiful venue. Stunning. It's like, Incredible. It's what would it be like, like Art Deco or Art Nouveau or what? Yeah, I'm so opinion. beautiful, like beautiful light. Everything's gold, like staircases, mirrors everywhere. Like, yeah. it's so beautiful. Really nice venue. Oh, let's go there soon. Yeah, we should. I think it was the first for, for that year of the film festival. It was the first one where we're like, cool, we're going to have a full house at the State Theatre. And we need, to, we need to get imagery of that mm -hmm. because that looks really impressive. It's a beautiful space, massive amount of people. Let's do it. So I was like, cool, we need to get some really big, ex like expansive shots, massive, massive wide shots. So I'm like, cool, I'm going to get up near the projector all the way at the back and shoot a huge wide, nice center, like centered, like great, like symmetrical great marketing, shot. symmetrical, great shot. Yeah. Done. Let's get that. So I've like talked to the guys near the projector and stuff, let them know that there's going to be somebody hovering around. I'm not going to stick my head up and block the whole movie. We're all good. And they're like, yep, sweet. And it's a really serious movie. Like yeah. it's quite intense. Dark. And I don't know, I didn't watch it, but I just, the, the tone of everything when I was there was yeah. like, the, you could hear serious. a pin drop. Yeah, it wasn't, and, it wasn't a rumble. Yeah, it wasn't like people were like, yeah, it wasn't loud They're and laughing. robust and blah, blah, blah. I was there underneath the projector mm. and there's this Are these little- these the last photos you're getting by the way? Or like the- Yeah, these are the last photos. I've already done the carpet and like yeah. people entering and like yeah. Atmos, blah, 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 all that stuff. I've already done everything. So I'm like, cool, got to get these shots. These are the, these are the hero shots we need. Mm. Um, and I'm there on this little plateau, like this little platform that's underneath the projection area. Yes. And it's pitch black, obviously, in a movie Yeah, because you can't use flash, obviously, and yeah, you can't, you can't yeah. see where I'm you're going. I'm not shining my, like, phone torch around. There's like, no ushers to watching. help you get to the yeah. projector area. Pitch black, I can't see a thing, and I'm, like, just trying to suss it out. Meanwhile, I've got cameras all over me. Yeah. And I'm on this platform, and there is just a hole, a random hole mm. in this platform. My left leg, straight through. I just feel <laughs> myself drop. This is Wait, the how quietest, high is the hole? This, it's like this, this high. Like, like to the ground. I, yeah, like I couldn't, I couldn't touch the ground. Yeah. Like my leg went in and yes. I was like, in my head, I was like, I'm broken my leg. <laughs> like it's a small hole. I thought yeah. I'd like fall over, snap my leg or something. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is bad. This is going to be bad. I like raised up my shin. Ugh. The loudest smash. The my loudest camera, crashing. The camera smacks into the platform, which yes. is wood, and it's like boom. So it's a crash of falling and a crash of all the camera gear crashing so on the floor. So loud at the quietest moment <laughs> in this movie. film, and there's like two and a half thousand people in this theater, and like everyone turns, turns around. around, obviously. Can you see the people? Oh, I can kind of see just like from like the light coming off the yes. projector and yes, stuff yes, like yes. that. Like I can see the eyes are on me. Yeah. And all it's like I a million like glowing dots. It's little, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and all I could do was just like, I like instantly Cringe. I knew how funny the moment was. And I was just like, I'm okay. <laughs> and so many people laughed. Yeah. I was just like, what? 
<laughs> oh, it was so embarrassing. I had to walk back down the little steps yeah. past everyone. And there's like all these really kind old ladies like next to me. And they're like, oh my God, are you okay? No, oh, no, you're, you're bleeding like, everywhere. I'm like, my leg's so painful. I'm like, limping away. And I'm like, trying fine. to carry my camera gear, <laughs> making sure. I'm like, is my flash still on my camera? Have I dropped anything? Because yeah, it's pitch true. black. And it was just so funny. Do you think you could have done anything better? I feel no, like that was just, just like a straight accident. up. Have your bad, wits about you, I guess. Bad moment. Yeah. I oh, love that story though. It was I just so I funny. I just I, I think I love it because I imagine it as like a cartoon sequence, so it's funny, but like thinking about like you I, I didn't know until yesterday when you were retelling the story to your dad that like you like all thought you broke your leg. That actually made me really scared. Because <laughs> I thought it was just like I think when you tell it to me you suffer the scary parts because I get really stressed about your safety. Yeah. So like Oh my god, that made me so stressed. Oh, yesterday. it was intense. Oh, do you know what's okay? This is funny. Well, we were doing like this when I did Samsung Unpacked or whatever. Like, basically, it was like a conference for Samsung where like they're launching new technology, and I was demonstrating something that was new. So I had like gotten access to the technology early. I had to like write my own script for like what I wanted to say about it, but it had to be scripted because it was such a tightly run event because it was live. Like there was an audience and it was like live online. You know when like tech companies like do launch new products and it's like you see like you can you can stay up to date with like the li the live feed that's like an hour or two long or something, but it's like super tight behind the scenes. I'm not good with scripted stuff, like so bad. And then also like knowing that so many people be watching, like millions of people really messed with my head a little bit. But I, we got to fly to New York. It was so fun. Um, I loved doing that wait what was the cringe thing here wait why is this cringe this is amazing <laughs> oh yeah okay so after all that was done like um we got to like enjoy parts of like being at the event so there was like interacting with the technology and stuff like that parties things like that and like Rock and I would, had just got to New York a few days before. We were just like exhausted, probably from jet lag. And I'm like, oh, there's this artist that's performing at this thing. We're like, we didn't really know who she was. And it was just like, do you want to go? We were just like literally at the door. Like we could have gone oh, stepped we this could, we way. Could hear it. Or just it gone. Just there. Back to the hotel. And I think we just went back to the hotel. It was Lizzo. It was an intimate performance from Lizzo. I wish I went to that so bad. It would have been so good. Just a free intimate performance with Lizzo. Oh my God, it would have been so good. That's not cringe. That's just like regrets. That's just silly. Don't let opportunities pass you by. Like if they, like even if you're exhausted, like, okay, maybe not if you're exhausted, but like. Uh, if you're exhausted. Like always lean on the side of like taking opportunities when they yeah. arise. Because you never know like what they're going to be. And like, yeah. that would have been so fun. Because she had like, was just popping off, like almost. Yeah, it was just like the start. Oh, but that's like not cringe. That's just like a personal thing. Oh, wait, there's one more film festival thing. Oh, is there? The, P the PR group photo thing. Oh, that was really bad. <laughs> was, uh, I like just arrived. and Is it the start or the end of the festival? I think it's the start. Okay. So I'm like, oh, cool. Great way to start it off. Um, I just arrived. And then PR team for that festival, big. So it was like 25 people. So like everyone's doing things, everyone's busy, everyone's got places to be. And then the director of the PR agency uh, gets everyone together, like wrangles them all from all the different places around this theatre. So yeah, okay, cool. They want to get a photo in front of the media wall. And I'm like, I just arrived. I just pulled my camera out, put a lens on. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, let's do this. Run over, get it's the photo. It's not on the shot list either. Not on the shot list. So, so I'm, like, no, it's not, I'm not prepared at all for this. Just trying to get my stuff sorted. And they're like, they're like oh, come on, be come nice on, come on. And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, sweet, let's company. do it. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, come on, let's do this. We've only got a short time. I'm like, okay, cool. I take a photo and I'm like, sweet. How, is thanks. there a setup? Like, do cool. you have to go somewhere? Or is it just like literally them standing there? No, it's just them standing there. But it's like 25 people. So it's like, cool, we can only spend like one second on 10 this. seconds on and this. And it's not maybe. on the shot list. It's not important to yeah. the event. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. Get the photo. And I'm like, sweet. And I'm like, okay, cool. I got to, like, I still got to pack. I got to do my stuff. I have no idea what I'm doing. And then I'm like, oh man, there's no card in the camera. Like later, do you? And like realize? everyone's like already started, like Dispersing. they're gone. I'm like, oh no, this is my client. So I'm like <laughs> talking to the, my friend photographer that's just, I'm like, oh, my card wasn't in. They're like, man, you got to like get that together again. I was like, oh, I do. And I'm like, oh, hey, oh, wait, everyone back together, back together. And they're like, what happened? And I'm like, oh, it didn't work. Come on. And just like <laughs> brush over it. And then like, it was just so embarrassing. Yeah. It just so like. Oh man. Is it because it's like a basic error? It's like you should. So basic. Should you have done it when like you Like photographers, not photographers, know to do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of another story, but I'll tell you to tell it off. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can't wait for the third story. Okay, okay go. Um, 
Oh, yeah, so what I was a shooting. Wealth of knowledge you've got. I know, wealth of cringe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was shooting this like this pretty fancy fashion thing. It was like to do with Fashion Week, and it was this like kind of more private uh, event, and it was yeah, it was it was pretty big. Yeah. Uh, it was like a big awards night. Yeah. And there was somebody coming up and. Because it was quite like fancy, it was more exclusive. So there weren't that many photographers, and yeah. there wasn't like a media pit at the end of the walkway, runway. Or the, yeah, the runway. Usually at the end of the runway, there's like a thousand cameras, it's like, and <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, and no one's allowed to use flash because obviously these models need to keep walking. They're also, it blinded. affects the. It also affects the. Um, the experience, the atmos. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like there's a lot of investment in that oh, as it, like a brand. Trust me, it ruins it. <laughs> <laughs> So I was just shooting other stuff previously and I, I honestly, I thought I turned the flash off, but apparently I didn't. And I went and took a photo of like a model when they were just coming up and talking dark event with only lighting on the catwalk. Yes. And there are all these the entire fancy room. Pairs. It explodes with brightness <laughs> and everyone just turns and I just go, oop. <laughs> And I'm like, holy shit. And the other photographer like, next to me is like, oh. Did, did people think it was him? <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. Because I didn't want it to be me. <laughs> I think it was pretty obvious it was me. Because I was like, oh. Yeah. What was the other flash? It was though? awful. It was terrible. Um, the other flash. The, kicking, the Mulberry event. Okay, Mulberry so we were, I was shooting uh, a Mulberry event. Really fancy brand. Really nice, like, high profile sort of thing. And it was like, all, oh, you know. Real, I think real they were cool. launching a bag. I don't know why I think that. Is that what was happening? Probably. I think so. Um, yeah, and it was like really like very cool event. Yeah. Everyone that arrived was like just models and fashion-y, like fancy, very fancy. And I had one of those camera straps where they thread onto the bottom of like a tripod mount mm -hmm. and then it turns into like a strap. And <laughs> they do have the option to unthread themselves and you kind of got to like... Like over time be, and yeah, you don't realise if you don't check. I didn't realize and it was hanging off my left shoulder and I'm like lining <laughs> up to take, yeah, I'm like, hey guys, just like come a little bit, like just okay, closer together. Yeah, great. And I like bend down just to like get the right angle and this thing drops off of my shoulder. The strap's chilling there. The camera drops off. It's hanging upside down and the flash is on the bottom and it just crushes the flash. <laughs> camera like explodes, like it just everywhere. All the pieces. And I'm like... Well, I can't do anything about it, and I'm about to take a photo. So I'm just like, "Yep, cool," and I just brush it off with my left foot, just Literally push kick it to the side, and I'm away. like, "Hey, guys!" <laughs> I don't know why that was my natural reaction. You know, you know, when you're just like, "Hope no one noticed that," but like everyone's watching, you're literally talking it's like to just, them. Like PR people are just standing around me, like, and like everyone's just like, "The heck!" Exploded on this I'm tiled funny. floor, and I'm just like, "Yeah, okay, cool, sweet. Don't worry about that. It's all good." I take this photo, and you can see it in their face. They're just like, <laughs> "What the hell? What's wrong with this kid?" And then, okay. um, yeah, then I picked it up and was like, "Damn, that sucks." Okay, can I tell you? And like Chris came over. Chris okay. was there. Yeah, Chris. And was he's there. like, Bro, you're, "Is your is your stuff good?" <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, like, "Normal reactions, nah. like, oh no, like people would really understand yeah. and be like, oh no, gather my things." Yeah. But like you're like, nothing's happening. Well, I'm just like, it's already broken. What am I gonna do? <laughs> Shoot with that camera? No, definitely not. <laughs> okay, the one that I thought of, I don't think you're thinking of right now. Wait, what are you it? thinking of it? I've no, no, I'm not thinking of any. That's it. All I'll say is Mandarin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you want to tell that story or not? Yeah, no, no this Double is great. List. This is hilarious. I forgot about this story. This <laughs> I know, is that's so what funny. I, really I was shooting just next door in my studio, <laughs> and this is obviously in the last two years. Yeah, it's like a fairly recent. Yeah, and. I was like, a pretty big job. Had like a whole room was full. We had like 15 people on set. It was like set design, big thing. We're shooting these what products. What was it? Was it, the, was it the bar thing? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was shooting these drinks and stuff. And I was like, cool. I want to shoot this on a long lens now. So I changed lens, put that lens on, took the lens cap off, and just this moldy orange peel just flew on the ground and just like, you know when it's like green and dusty? <laughs> it just like puffed. <laughs> Client is standing there. It lands here. Videographer, why audio you, guy. Why was it we're like in a circle, like looking at it. And we're just speechless. And I'm, I'm like, like, did I do that? Uh? 
Jesus. And it's so embarrassing because it's so it's gross. It's so like objectively disgusting. It's so gross. Also very primary school when you leave the orange in the bottom of your bag. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like reveals to them that you haven't used that lens. Like, do you even, are you a <laughs> And so what happened was often when I'm shooting and running around on like events and things like that, you take the lens cap off, you put it in your pocket. <laughs> At the end of the event, you put the lens cap back on. Now, I think I was eating a mandarin or an orange at said event. I have to and say. And I had scooped that up in the lens cap and closed it into the front element and just let it sit there. Like, this is a sitting. It's probably ruined that lens. And it just has gone sour. <laughs> And it's just turned to like I dust. I have to say, the lesson here is like your disposal of like food oh. scraps because sometimes I will come into my shoes and be half eating carrot on my desk so or like an apple core like somewhere. So embarrassing. There's yeah. still a mark. There's still a mark on that lens cap, and I think of it every now and then when I look at the lens cap and I'm like, I love that. Sorry, I know it's not really related. But I love it's so, so cringe. Much. Oh, it's so bad. Wait, I think someone, someone I reacted. Think... Someone reacted too. Oh someone yeah. Someone saw it. Did no, you no. Say we that? all we were standing around. <laughs> Every, and I had to be like, oh, that looks like an, well, the orange peel. <laughs> I was just thinking I'd be like, anyway, let's, let's photograph this. <laughs> so cringe. It was so cringe. Oh, that makes me laugh. It was awful. I love that story. It's a movie. It, this one is a, is a well, short film festival. Wow, you really are the film. Should we get back into the film festival? <laughs> like you're really good at it. Like everyone was dying to But also it. I'm really bad at it maybe because this is where all of my like <laughs> no. cringe moments go no, from. No, no, no. The reason it is like that is because it's such a, such a high press, pressure event and you're doing so many things in a day. Yeah, there, there are That's why. things happening. Yeah. So we were shooting uh, this short film festival thing and we we're shooting the uh, media launch for it. So this is like pre-event and we there's getting, always celebrity judges at this one. Like there's, cause it's yeah, the biggest are. short film festival we, we, in the world I wasn't, I wasn't shooting the celebrity judges and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I was shooting all of the producers, directors and main cast. Yes. So this is a big day and a lot of people involved. So like a lot of work went into this to make everyone's schedule work. And yeah. that we're like, it's, it's quite important. And this is all the marketing collateral for like coming up and like news media stuff. Yes. All right, sweet. All right, cool. So it'll be like director and producer. Yeah. Um, Mostly there's cast as well, so lots of people. I'm photographing all of these, and there's kids as well. Okay. There's the kids version too, and that's another oh, yes, additional. Yes, yes. So like hundreds of people that I'm photographing yes. and just getting set. So, because they, like, this is a big thing for these people. Like no one is yeah. a professional, mostly. Yeah. And I feel like it's a big deal to get into this because it's like one of the biggest it's, short it's, film festivals in the world. Thing. So it's yeah. like everyone wants their own photo in front of yeah. like the thing. And that's that is the brief. We need that so that if let's say said movie wins oh, we need photos got the of winner. them yeah they're clean and ready oh my god i didn't so realize like, it was so high pressure i thought this was just a regular job okay yeah, it's pretty important okay um so i photograph like every set of films in producer director or like director only and then like cast only and then everyone together all the different arrangements everything's done and then i'm we're, we're done with the event awesome went well took like four or five hours took took a while and I'm sitting there editing on the site because they need them ASAP because they need to start sending stuff out to media. And my memory card reader just drops out just while importing. And I'm like, oh, well, that's no good. It's like, like in the middle. You know when you pull out a, a hard drive in? and it corrupts yeah. the entire hard drive? Yeah. So I plug it back in and it's corrupted. So like there's and nothing like, on it. It's, it's like error, it's error, error. It's fully just not, not looking good. Yeah. And I'm sitting there with, my, with the client just a meter two meters away from me another one there and we're all like cool sweet chatting how's it going like you know when are those photos yeah. coming and i'm like okay i need to sort this out i need to like i need to gauge quickly at how serious this is obviously it's serious but like is it recoverable yes what can i do so i'm how, quickly, i will never financially recover from this pretty much one of those moments <laughs> of like oh my gosh and because like other, there's no other photographers is there no, no one getting these no, portraits. No, no one's getting these. So, the like, same if this happens, then you lose all the PR from the event, all the newspapers. There's nothing. Yeah. Hundreds of people coming together a for this. Down. Yeah. Pre just, <clears throat> just basically for this. A few, a few media people for like a 
press conference that they did, but not like the actual detailed individual like arrangement photos. Yeah. Those are very important. So I'm like, oh man, I've got to figure this out. So let's quickly Google. Clients and I'm literally over your like, shoulder being like, how's it going? Yeah, and I'm like hotspotting, Googling things, being like, okay, corrupt card, how to fix like recovery. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Wait, did they see you Googling that? No, I'm like, yep, sweet. <laughs> they Please come over you like, <laughs> Sorry, it's not ready yet. Quickly change the app, command tab. <laughs> and then, um, so I quickly buy and download this like data, data recovery software yeah. for $85. Just being like, I need something and Desperate I'm not just, I'm not going to waste my time on like a free random pro. I'm going to yeah. buy something that feels serious. So I do that quickly, put it in. And I don't know if anyone's ever done a data recovery thing, but it's slow. <laughs> it like, it recovers everything that's ever still been shot on that card. Oh, so because like, so do you, you want to explain to like how, uh, it, I guess it's not necessary. I was going to say explain The how way it. that like cards format and stuff <clears throat> is basically it just like puts a rule on it that that is, you can write over it. Yeah. So everything always still exists on it. Not like everything until it's been it's written shot over. over. with the same title or something, right? Or just like until that space is necessary. Okay. So if you have 32 gigs and you only use 16, there's 16 of I've previous work. Else. Yeah. Um, but it's just not... <clears throat> It doesn't show up because it's had a little tag on it that's like, this is, now we can write over yeah. it. It's no longer necessary. Anyway, so I'm downloading everything that is still available on this card because you can't oh, just you like... you shot like some weird shit. Oh, that'd be really cringe as well. But I took ages. Yeah. Took way, way so, too long. So they're like circling you being like... They're like, what's up? And I'm like... Where are the yep, photos? Are they, are, are they trying to send it out to newspapers or something? Yeah, what? yeah. They okay. want to send it out straight away. And I'm like, oh my God. But I'm like, fingers crossed. Like, I'm like, this is feeling like it's working. Yeah. And like, I think it's going to be good. It's to be positive. It, it took, Imagine if it, it took probably 45 minutes just oh to import God. the photos. Oh my God. And not even editing, not even culling. Not selecting, blah, blah, blah. culling, cropping or anything. And I would be done with like editing, cropping, culling, all that stuff within like 30 or 40 or like 40 minutes. So why, so what did the client think? Like, were they Oh, sus? I was just like, yep, we're good. <laughs> we're sweet. Don't worry about it. Oh, you're such Sorry. a deceptive boy. No, because it was like, we need to we need to keep this good and like yeah. make sure that it's still fine. Because that was one of those moments where it's like, no. The client I'm, doesn't need to know this I'm right certain. this point yeah, the because client you can solve it. it. They're still kind of like talking and dealing with like the people that are still lingering yeah. and like all the all the director and producer people and they're like, they're, they're, they're doing their thing. Yeah. So it's like, it's not super, super, super dire, but it's pretty bad. And download them all, edit them as fast as I can, <laughs> like, Probably super Copy rough. paste. <laughs> yeah, just like, oh my God, we got to yeah. get through this. And then I send them through and we're all good. And it's just like... The, oh, it's like a few oh, moments. And think? I was just like sitting there. So Dying, like, oh anxious. my God, that was the scariest thing. I've never had like a coro like card corrupt or a hard drive like fail on me like that. And it was yeah. just like... I feel like there's, for, for how long you've been working, I feel like you should have had a lot of times where like the photos are gone and like you have yeah, to be like... like I don't know why. I don't know why I feel like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but then I actually told the client uh, the next day that that happened like a week later or like what two, like a month later or something on another job. And I was like, you know that thing? Because we're talking oh, about yeah. like something that was like, like Wait, some, so what did some you serious say? thing what did that you went exactly wrong that we recovered. And what did they say? Oh no, I can't remember. They, they, they brought something up which was like a serious thing that like they had like recovered and they kind of like, like fudged their way. And I was like, hey, you know, uh, you know that other <laughs> job that we did? And then like, it took a while. Yeah, the reason it took a while is that card actually <laughs> just fully dropped out. We lost everything for like, and he's like, what, what, what do you mean we lost everything? Like you still had like the photos. And I was like, no, no, no. There was potential that we lost everything. Oh and my I, God. and he was like, oh my God, I'm so glad I did not know that. <laughs> and I, it's all good now. Yeah. It was very funny. I feel like there's, if there's a skill, I, I feel like I'm going to say this a lot. If there's one thing, right? like I feel like another good skill of that you have that allows you to be really good at what you do is like being able to think on your feet and like problem solve yeah, all the time. It. Because yeah. I feel like some people just freeze, but yeah. you don't. And yeah. you're resourceful as well. Yeah. I also, with that, this is like the learning curve of this. I also knew that memory card reader wasn't great, but I never considered that it would actually just fully corrupt my yes. card. And I was like, yeah, you just kind of got to be like, you know, holding you the right file. I was like, I'll replace it in a sec. It's fine. Oh, so the lesson is replace your gear. If it's faulty, don't risk it. Yeah. Don't, especially with anything to especially do with, like, with data. data and yeah. tech kind of uh -huh. stuff like that. If it's like a camera or even no, a camera. If, it, if it's more physical, like a light stand, like obviously you're going to see like... Oh, yeah, but what if it but drops still, in all your if it drops things? things just replay, you got you to gotta fix gear. Yeah. That's why being a photographer is very expensive. Okay, the next one is the another example of how shielding your true emotions on the inside can be good. I feel like maybe in this situation, Rocket should not have expressed exactly how I was feeling. This is the winery story. 
Oh, yeah, this wasn't so bad. But it I was think just it's more like, like... I think you could have... Man. You have the ability to hide it, I feel like. And I couldn't that time. Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Okay, well, okay, set it up. So you're in oh, yeah, South so Africa doing a tourism job. Yep. <clears throat> you're at a really fancy location. Real fancy. Like a winery. They make real, their own amazing wine or something. We the don't drink, by the way. Fanciest of vi- vineyards and They have like a I've really fancy to. painting or something. And this vineyard was plush. It was very nice. All right. And so what so, happened? Then we're having lunch with the CEO, the owner of this vineyard. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you don't drink. Oh, you must try this. <laughs> trust me, you'll like it. Oh, you are an alcoholic. Please drink this. That's no, no, no. Like, what try, if you were an try, alcoholic? Try this. Trust me. And I'm like, trust me, you'll like this. I'm just letting you know, man. I'm not going to like it. Please don't. Please waste don't. it on me. It's very expensive. Yeah, please. Yeah, please don't waste it on me. And please don't be offended when I'm like, oh, don't like that. Yeah. And sure enough, he hands me this glass. And I take a good old sip and I was like repulsed. <laughs> I was like, oh. like I just couldn't. I usually am able to be like, oh yeah, sweet. Why? Is it strong? It was just so like, just punched me in the face, went right on my nose and I was like, oh man, <laughs> that is not good. Like I was just like, oh, and it was really cringe because it was just such a special thing. And I could see like the other guys I was with were like, oh. And it's not like your direct client as well. It's like Tyson. Yeah, it wasn't my direct client stuff. So I, I like, remember sorry, seeing guys. Rocket drinking wine on someone's Instagram story and I was like freaking out because like you'd never express you wanted to drink. Like you'd always I been the most you'd never had a drop of alcohol in your life. So I was just like, yeah, he's becoming an alcoholic. Like me catastrophizing at that point because I didn't know anything was wrong with me. Yeah. I'm just like, Rocket is becoming an alcoholic and he's going to destroy our lives. Yeah, you thought I was traveling to the other side of the world just to go and have a big boozy party. I honestly party. don't know what I thought, but I, the way I reacted was like, I think what it was, it's like, you're changing, you're so different and I didn't know who you are or something. Like, that's what I feel. Yeah, that, this is like a pretty light one. Um, this is just one of those things where it's like, that where you don't really do the best practice and you just kind of like hinder your... Like potential I think if like, you're, you're not believing in yourself stops you from actually yeah. being who you think you're not. Like yeah. you that's... are that person, but you your your belief in yourself like ruins it. Kind yeah. of. So I went and I, I reached out to a bunch of agencies and a bunch of different like companies and stuff, being like, "Cool, like if you have like events and things like that." I was doing a lot of events at that time, and this company got back to me and they're like, "Yeah, sweet. Let's like, why don't you come to the office and we can have a chat and like we can get coffee and blah yeah. blah." And I was like, "Yep, nice. Rolled up." On top of being interested in working with me and wanting to move forward with some events and projects. They were like, we're also considering kind of having like an in-house kind of roster, mm-hmm. like representing, being represented and having somebody manage my work and emails and admin yeah. at that stage would have been Did really great. Did you still not ready at the time or something? Like, And yeah, they asked deserving, me to send everything or... through and like, I just like, I didn't, I don't know, it didn't end up, I didn't end up doing it. It yeah. didn't feel... 100 percent right yeah but if it didn't feel right i should have communicated that and been clear and just not done that in the right way if yeah. i was not going to do it but also like just or send it and then it. see what options you have available because yeah. i feel like you never know i can always be like cool guys this isn't working out not for me whatever yeah. but it was my own just like i don't know maybe my doubts or maybe something that i didn't i didn't follow that and yeah i think i probably should have i've had two experiences like that with the same company so like it's like the biggest streaming company in the world, essentially. Would, is it? Would it be? Well, that says you don't really even need to. I would say I don't want to say it, but I just like <laughs> what you think of when you think of the streaming company, like when you <laughs> watching shows online on TV. That it was that company. Yep. So one was we got approached by. It was just sold to like this company as like a, sh- a movie, yep. and it had Lily Reinhardt in it. And this is fresh off of like Riverdale fame, like huge. Anyway, like they were like, hey, like we had, I had a meeting with the director, blah, blah, blah. And like, I just never followed through with it. Like they were like, yes, yeah, send some, send some sample illustrations. Cause a big part of the movie was like, this person was like an illustrator or creative and they wanted to put it throughout the sets. And like, that is like, you, I love movies. Like yeah. it's my dream to like do, to work with movies. Like not forever, like not as the main part of my career, but like, I would love to do something once, like, and be in the credits of a movie. And like, be, even if it's just like something silly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Anyway, like they're like cool, like send through some examples. I just never sent them through. I think I think it was self doubt. I think it was like unaddressed mental health, like no. just. And I'm not an avoidant person, but that was like full on avoidance. It was not good, and like I really regret it, just because I could. I I regret it. I think I was in the same position. I don't know if I wanted to do it, but I feel like I should have 
address that when it, if I got the opportunity or not. Because now I'm like regretting not doing, not sending the stuff. Yes. It's also really cringe because you don't know like, that person may have not gone with you anyway, but like you might have a connection with them in the future. Maybe there's a perfect project that they're gonna yeah. be able to offer you in the future. And it's also just like unprofessional. Mm. Like it's also like disrespectful, like, oh, your project wasn't good enough or something. That's how I think it would be perceived when it wasn't that at all. Yeah, and like, you're better off just kind of like any of there rather than wasting anyone else's exactly, time. Exactly, so. exactly. And then the other time with the same streaming platform is that I knew someone that worked at this company from, they, they used to work at a social media agency in Australia that handled that company. Then they moved to America and they now worked for like the company, right? Yep. And like, I got invited to like have a meeting with them to see like the work we could do together, like illustrative work that we could do. Cause I had done some stuff in the past, like one thing. And um, I remember getting there and I was late first of all, cause like LA traffic and stuff. And I think it was also nerves. Like I should have left way earlier. Yep. You and Nate were there. This is when we were all in LA and like you went to Starbucks or whatever. Oh uh, yeah. And it was just like, I was a little late, which is also like huge no-no. Like I'm usually pretty punctual. It might've been LA traffic, but I think it was also just like, I don't know, yeah. hard to find the building or something like that. Anyway, and then, so like they had blocked out this meeting time and obviously that meeting time was then cut because like, not a huge amount, but like cut because they only have this set aside. Like I wasn't yeah. respecting their time enough to like get there like an hour early and just wait outside and then go in. Yeah. And then also they like talk about all the things we could have done together. And like the ball was kind of in my court and I just didn't do anything. Now I would like, I think I'm like getting, I think I really hadn't addressed like some mental health issues. So I think um, I just like allowed it to happen. But now I'd just be like, just push that aside and just like get into it or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just feel like, oh, so less cringe, more regret, more like kicking yourself. Like that's so silly. Like yeah. if I was my younger self or anyone watching probably is just like, why would you do that? Like that's like career changing or like a great thing for your career and you just like didn't do it. Like it wasn't even anything was stopping me. I just like didn't do it. So dumb. Yeah. And I really regret it. But anyway, maybe mainly regret it from like the rudeness perspective. Yeah, you never want to be perceived as like... That's it. I think it's like... That's, that's not at all what you... Uh, cringe. You that out. Oh, really? this was, yeah, this was just like... This is like cheeky, in, a bit like, like obnoxious. A, you will... Well, we're, we're doing one of those travel tourism jobs and we got to carry all our gear and like... On the plane. Already had a lot of stuff like go like missing in previously and things like that. So I was like, I'm not risking that. And we've we've got a time crunch. I can't, yeah. I can't deal with losing my camera gear. Yeah. So I brought all my camera gear on me and like obviously like there's a six kilo bag limit and my 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 thing's gonna be like 21 kilos or something. Yeah. And they're like, yep, let me uh, wet your bag. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and also like he okay. risks it a lot. like. Yeah, and I'm like, here you go. And they're just like, oh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's way over, dude. Like, you are more than double. You are beyond. This yeah. is not happening. They're like, you need to sort that out. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, you don't weigh me. So, <laughs> and I luckily had a jacket on that had a lot of pockets. Pocket. So I just like, just, just <laughs> so smart ass of me, really not. In front of them or not? Yeah, like, I just stare, like, looking at them in the eyes and being like, one That's lens so in this neat. jacket, one lens in that, like one camera body here. I'll just hang a camera off here and put a jacket over it and just, just <laughs> oh everything. God. Everything was on me. Yeah. To the point that I just gave them back an empty bag. Yeah. And I was like, there you go. And they just looked at me and they were like, okay, great. Yeah. I'll see you at the gate. They said that. They were like, you know how it's like they oh, go. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll see you at the gate. And I like was like, oh, okay. And then <laughs> so I, you um, never see them again? And I like put it all in the cam like in the bag again, because I, I don't want to carry it all oh. the way. We still had ages till like the flight or like yeah. a little while. So I was like, yeah, I'll just put it in there and I can redo this saga again when I get to the gate. <laughs> and I got to the gate and they were like, Hi. And Do you think they I made a like, point to like go to the gate? Oh uh, yeah. And they were like waiting for me. But they'd have to deal with so many shit. They were waiting people. for me and I just like rolled off and I was like, Hello, Hello. how are you doing? <laughs> And they're like, how's your bag? Do I need to weigh your bag? And I was like, one second. And I opened, like I went to go open it. They were like, don't bother, you smart ass. Like they said smart ass. I remember the, the, the term smart ass was used. Oh, and I no. was like, oh. Ooh. <laughs> That's a Ooh, bit of consequences for my actions right going around. Yeah, it was, it was like, it was incredible. Like it is, I don't like, I don't like being. No. The last thing I want to talk about is this is not career cringe, this is just more something that happened during like a work trip, which was when we went to New York for that Samsung Unpacked thing, I, we were put up in a hotel and I was flying business class because 
they just were going to fly me business class. And I was like, okay, I've never flown business class. I would love to fly business class. And then Ro Rocket, we like but decided to extend the trip and make a stay out of it. So Rocket also bought tickets to New York, but he was on a different flight because mine were bought through um, Samsung and yours weren't. So like I got there, Rocket was supposed to arrive a few hours after me. I got to the hotel, I started unpacking my things, being calm, la la la. I'm like, where is Rocket? Like he should be here by now. And I had a dinner that night with like the whole Samsung team as well as like the agency team we're, and, the, and the director. Of we're getting into this story. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's why it's not cringe, but it's okay. like, yeah, it's not it's not career cringe. It's just like this is effed up. Yeah, it's crazy. Just a little cherry on the top. Yeah, I feel. yeah. Okay, cool. The chaos of our lives. Somehow yeah. this follow this kind of energy follows us everywhere. Somehow. Yeah, follows you for some reason. I think someone's following me, and it's you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so basically, Rocket, I'm, I'm going to this dinner. Be like, okay, Rocket should have been here, but like, fine, maybe he's like flight got delayed by like an hour or two, or three or four, whatever. Maybe he's picking up his bags, whatever. Maybe he's just like enjoying his time. That's fine. Couldn't get in contact with him also because like didn't have roaming on or something. Yep. Yeah, or like maybe your battery. I didn't, I had no idea what was going on. All I knew is that Rocket was already supposed to be there for like a couple of hours, but he wasn't. But I had this like event to go to, so that's fine. I went to this dinner, had a great time. Then I went upstairs, being like, okay, Rocket will be. Then I was like, open the, the um. I texted you all the details as well, like the yes. hotels and all that stuff. Because yes. when you got to the hotel, you could use the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So like, I knew you'd be able to get it. So like, I, I I opened the door and I was like, he's not there. What the hell? That's weird. And then I checked my Facebook Messenger. And at the time, our mutual friend, Kim, who I love, was working with you as your like admin person. Yep. And they had received, they, they sent me a message. I'll try and find it, I reckon. So they, they had access to my emails. Email. Wait, I need to find it because I just feel like it will be here because I don't Which message I'm Kim. so glad that that timing worked out. I know. That Kim was working with me when this happened. Because that was crazy. Oh my God, okay. And I also didn't know like my it's mental gonna, health things at this time reading. as well, like catastrophizing and everything. I haven't looked at this since. Well, yeah, why would you? Why would you okay, so I got like, this? I got like two missed calls. It was 2019 by the way. No, 2020. No, no, because no, COVID has happened, but March 2020 was when COVID took off, remember? Oh, wow. So this was August 2019. So Kim tried to call me two times, like in the following hour, but I was at this event and I probably didn't have internet at this point because I was downstairs. I was like, hey, and then they were like, hey, is everything okay? I thought he would have landed by now. I was like, I don't know, Rocket hasn't contacted me and I'm scared. And then I said, yeah, he got his plane and said he landed, but I haven't heard from him. Kim was like, hey, it's okay. And then I said, I'm gonna go down to the lobby. And then Kim said, what time is he meant to land? I'm like, I... And then I said, I got a message at five to say he'd land. And this time was like, this was like 11 p.m. at this point, like yeah. six hours after he's supposed to have already landed. Yeah. And then Kim said, give the number an e and email a ring if you'd like. They might be able to give you some info about where the bags are. And I was like, and his bags just turn up. And then Kim's like, I'm sure it'll be okay. I'm like, I haven't received the email. Basically, like, I was, like, waiting around. Like, I had found out that Rocket's bag had been found at a station. Like, your bag had been, like, with your laptop and stuff, had been found at, like, a, some random station. And what was going through my head was, like, law and order vibes. Of like, course. we're in New York. Dun, dun, Rocket's dead. That's what I feel like happened. Like your your bag was found at a station, not with you. You were supposed to you were supposed to be at the hotel like hours before. Like I was so stressed out, and I couldn't contact you. Like it, my phone calls wouldn't go through, all this stuff. And I like I literally thought you were dead. I was like I like had waited around, like tried to solve all this stuff with Kim. Like thank God Kim was there to talk to me and stuff because I would have been going crazy. And then I went to go down to the concert to be like, what do we do? Like should we call the police? And I had to go do a conference in like a few days. Yeah, this is bad. Obviously, this is more important, but I was just like, how am I going to even do that if you're dead? <laughs> like, maybe yeah. like, how will I work if you're dead? Yeah. Anyway, basically, like I pressed the lift and I was like really stressed out. Like, I'm like, what do I even say? Like, I'm already uncomfortable because I'm like, I don't like making calls. I don't like doing things where I feel like maybe it's not the right decision and there's no like feedback of what to do. And so I like press the button to go down to the concierge to be like, can we call the police or whatever? And then like the doors opened and Rocket was in the lift. Oh my God. It was so full on that moment of just the doors opening and yeah. just like, oh my God. I was so stressed. Anyway, do you want to tell your side of the story? To, yeah, to say that was my, my side. side. I got off the plane and was like, oh sweet, I should get a SIM card. I'll get a SIM card on the way in. Don't worry about it. It's all good. I've already let Sean know that I've landed and I'm on the way. I had accidentally got on the train from the airport into the city and left my tote bag with my laptop just on the platform. Like I picked up all my bags, but that bag stayed behind. Yeah. And so what happened is somebody had picked it up. So they opened my laptop and they saw that my username was Rocket Wears. They found my Instagram. Yeah. And then they Probably got my details. Him. Yeah. They got my details through there. 
and oh my then, God. but it was actually the the guy's daughter. The guys that looked you up on Instagram and like we're like, oh, we can look them up. And like, yeah, when they when they got the name and stuff, and a rocket like, yeah, just so shot Obama, and they I, were yeah, like, I just they were like, if it photo. was a different president, we would not have returned. It. Yeah, yeah, it was very <laughs> funny, and um, yeah, so they reached out, they found me, they found my email, and they reached out, and that was the email that Kim ended up forwarding on yeah. and discussing to Sean. And I, for oh, quite a while, like I was on the train for a good while. And I, then I realized, like, I didn't know that my laptop was missing. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I freaked out, got off the train and went back and then went to like the train security and like talked to everyone I could at the train station. No one's really interested or helping me out. And then I was like, okay, well, I need to get a SIM card now. At this time, it has now gone too late and all the stores had closed in this area. Yeah. Couldn't get a SIM card anywhere. And I was like, okay, well, that's really stressful. And I'm sitting there being like, at what point did I lose it? Do I need to go back to the airport? When did I have it? Yeah. I had it on the train station, I swear. And then I'm like, is it on the train that I got on? What happened? This, that. And I'm like stressing out. And then eventually I just had to be like, okay, I just have to leave my laptop. It's done. Yeah. I've lost it. It's gone. Yeah. And that took a while and then I caught the train back and um, I think like I couldn't, for whatever reason, I couldn't get a taxi. Yeah. Probably I was like, what's happening? I just, I just couldn't see any. I was like, what is happening? It's in I mean, New York. I'm in New York. What is going on? Taxi capital. And I was like, oh, it's just like bad timing. And I was like, okay, I'll just catch another train and caught another train to like wherever. And my phone was I do think you dying. could have gone to a McDonald's and like messaged me. I couldn't, I couldn't see anything. And then I went to a McDonald's. There was no Wi-Fi. Okay. There was no Wi-Fi anywhere. I don't know why, but I could not, every moment that I had, and also being cautious of the fact that my phone was like 5%, I was yeah. like, I need to check in with Wi-Fi all the time, but I also need to put my phone on airplane mode and just like try How did you know where the hotel, what the hotel was? Did you just memorize it or something? I think I remembered the name and yeah. then I had a Google Maps so thing that I like had basically screenshot. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm not letting my GPS function because like because yeah. you can still kind of GPS without yeah. like it sort of just tells you roughly where you are yeah um, and yeah so I was like I know whereabouts this is I know like the suburb it's yeah. fine and I kind of just went there and eventually found the space and it was so stressful yeah I just I felt so like I, felt so I literally bad. thought you were dead so I was like when I saw you I was just like so happy oh, I felt so bad because I was like how can I not get Wi-Fi <laughs> like it felt so stupid it felt like I was making you're excuses. literally in America <laughs> I was like I can't yeah. Constantly. And I was like in subways and stuff. And they're probably a subway like Wi Fi now, but like I swear at the time they didn't because I was yeah, not getting internet tried. anywhere. Oh, that's a bit traumatic actually. You know, oh, that you're talking about. I'm like, on. It was sad. really bad. And then I ended up meeting up with a guy later and got, got laptop my laptop back. back. So and nice. And then I think the I think the daughters had a crush on you when they saw your Instagram because I think that because they wrote that little note. That they wrote like, a really cute little yeah, note. It was, very it was so sweet. nice. Yeah, it was very sweet. Yeah, the dad, like, I'm like, wow, thank God that they found like. It, they did oh, exactly, specifically exactly. or like with my wallet the other day like thank yeah. god that that one person came across it yeah and like i told i i detailed the whole process in like my stories and stuff and everyone that was like from new york was like this is insane yeah this is the rarest occurrence and any rando would have just picked that up and just and like taken. fair enough opportunistic like yeah, like how would you know who to like how would yeah. you really know who it belongs to Exactly. Like it takes a lot of effort to find out who it belongs to and like yeah. get it back in touch with that person. And I was like, it was hard to give him money for being like, thank you for returning. Yeah. Because I was like, I got to give you something. Yeah. And he was like, no. Like he was like so adamant. And I was like, I'm not leaving until you accept this. Yeah. I had to like put up a fight. Do you like, now? Being so nice. <laughs> what about um, like crazy. not knowing COVID was going to happen? That was amazing. <laughs> that yeah. was like, was, we knew that. Yeah. No, we didn't know COVID was even... Ex I, I think it must no. have been popping off at some point that month or the next month. We did month. that and then we did Japan and that was when we were like... Yeah, but I'm saying oh. like we didn't... I don't think COVID even happened at that yeah. point. And August 9th. No. Uh, maybe I'm not sure. I don't know. Anyway, wild. Yep. That's all we got. I feel like there's probably more. Also, if this is a potential future and or past client watching jokes... <laughs> That didn't happen. We are really responsible. Also, yeah, none of that happened I feel bad because you like were being so vulnerable and saying all your stories, but I don't actually. I feel like maybe I don't have that much cringe stories. Mine is like fixating on slightly cringe moments that like I wish I could change a little, but didn't really have like a impact on my life. Yeah. I don't think I have very many of those because I don't go outside and do I'm, things. I'm sure that once we stop this, I'll think of like three others. There'll be there'll be more. Yeah. I'm sure there's more. Yeah. But yeah, those are pretty, there's some good ones in there. Yeah, I, I enjoyed going through them with you. I feel like if you guys have cringe stories, you definitely need to share them. Like, you, we gave you so many cringe stories, or at least Rocket did. Rocket gave you so many of his cringe stories. You tell us your cringe stories, and I want details. 
Like I want blocks of text. Yes, I want to be able to read through this late at night and laughing. Laugh. Yeah. That's what I want to be, yes. Yeah, and if you have the lessons too, we want, I want to know that too. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Thanks for being my video, sweetheart. Thank you for having me. That's all right. It's Thanks for fun. sharing your special stories. No worries, anytime. Anytime? The yeah, same stories? Well, if we could do that. Enjoy that, guys. Enjoy. We're going to repeat this video <laughs> next time when we don't know what to do. It'll be an annual thing. We just tell the same stories. I would like to do more like long form content. So we'll yeah. see if pe people like it or not. And then maybe we can do some more. Yeah. Obviously, like everyone always says, if you have any ideas, suggest it. Cool. Put that down. Comments. It's do whatever else. And if you want to like this video, like, you know, oh, you yeah. can if you want. Yeah, do that. And if you don't want to, you don't yeah. have to. If you cool. dislike it, I guess you could dislike it, but maybe you should do that. I mean, if you got it this far, but to my receive heart that message, can't take it. it. My heart can't take it. Maybe people are just letting play. And they're like, oh, why is this still? They just walked into the room. And they're like, why is this playing? Okay, bye everyone. I'll see you very soon. Bye. Oh, I have my next video is the drawings from the, the theater in Sydney that I did, and I'm really excited about that. Yeah, that's cool. <gasps> Nothing. Okay, bye. Bye. Yay, now I can get a Starbucks if I want. I should do work there. I don't want to. Yay, baby. Thank you, baby. Are you going to edit that for me?